In this video, I'm going to address two of your questions. First, how can you use options to fix or repair a losing covered call position? And the second question is an even more popular one. How can we use options to trade in Tesla stock? We'll answer both of those questions in this video starting right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mindful Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please note I am not a financial advisor. This video is for educational purposes only. It is not meant to be investment advice of any sort. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for you on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. If you've been trading options for any amount of time, eventually you're going to have a position that goes against you. Let's talk through a unique little use strategy that you can use to repair a covered call or poor man's covered call position that's gone against you. Here you see a position we're in right now in Campbell Soup, ticker symbol CPB. Before we talk to this position, let's back up in time and let me show you what's happened with our trades in Campbell Soup since December of last year. Here you see every trade we made in Campbell Soup since December 24th of last year. Notice in the blue rectangle that we've been selling quite a few put options in Campbell Soup. If you look at the far right column in the blue rectangle, which is labeled net, notice that every trade has turned out good for us except for the very first one. However, notice that in the red rectangle, which is right below the blue one, that on June 17th, we were assigned the June $49 put options. As you can see under the Received from Sell column, we're paid $1.32 per share for selling those put options. However, on June 17th, we're assigned those 600 shares of Campbell Soup at $49 per share. Now typically when this happens, we'll just turn this into a covered call position. That's our strategy. Sell a put option in a stock that we wouldn't mind owning. If the stock is put into our account, then we switch it over to a covered call position. The problem though, as you can see here on the daily chart of Campbell Soup, is it had moved pretty far away from the $49 per share that we had been assigned the stock at. We didn't want to put ourselves in a position in which Campbell could be caught away from us at a price less than the $49 per share as a result of selling call options at a lower strike price just to generate more cash flow. But we still wanted to generate good cash flow while we waited for Campbell to come back up to that $49 per share entry price. So what could we do to accomplish all this? Well, we could just sell the $49 call options. The problem is that they were only paying $0.34 cents per share even if we went out two months out to August. Now, if that's the best we could do, we take that $0.34 cents while also collecting the $0.37 cents per share in dividends, as you can see here at the blue box, because we'd most likely still own Campbell Soup on the ex-dividend date of July 13th. However, as option traders, we always want to think through and explore what other tools we have available to us to improve our return. We like to generate as much cash flow as possible while still lining ourselves up for a win. So what can we do to line ourselves up for a win while still generating more cash flow than just this 71 cents per share? What if we could pretty much double down on the call option premium that we received while still selling the same $49 strike call option over the same two month time frame. Would that sound interesting to you? I know it did to me, and here is what we did. Notice towards the bottom of the screen in the purple rectangle, notice the last two lines of our trades here in Campbell Soup. At the top line in the purple box, notice that on June 17th, we sold the third Friday of August $49 call options. In the next column, under the numbers of contracts, notice that we sold 12 contracts. Remember, as you just saw above, we only own 600 shares of Campbell Soup. So we were selling two times the number of call options at the $49 strike price as number of shares that we owned. The result is that we got to collect 35 cents per share times two. But you might be thinking, Randy, you're really going to have a problem if Campbell Soup goes wild and flies past that $49 strike price by the third Friday of August. You know what? I totally agree with you. So what do we do to protect our backside? How about we pay a little bit for some insurance just in case that happens? That's what we did at the bottom line here in the purple box. Here you see that we bought the exact same expiration date, the third Friday of August, $55 call options. As you can see under the cost to buy column, they cost us nine cents per share. Also under the number of contracts column, notice that we bought six contracts. Why did I feel comfortable selling twice the number of calls as compared to the number of Campbell Soup shares that we own. Here you see both the daily and weekly charts of Campbell Soup on the day we were assigned this stock 
and sold the extra call options. Notice where the white arrow is here on the daily chart that in order for Campbell Soup to get back to the strike price of the call options we sold, we would have to push through both the green 50 and red 200 moving average. But before it even gets there, notice that where the purple line is, Campbell Soup will also have to push through an area of support around 47.5 per share that has served as support several times for this year. Remember that once support fails, that support area typically turns into resistance when the stock goes back up. We expect that to most likely happen here with Campbell Soup. So we have three major technical areas of resistance that Campbell Soup will have to push through over the next 60 days in order for our doubled up short call option position to be in jeopardy. Well, let's look over at the weekly chart to see if there's anything else that might serve as resistance. Here again, you see that in order for Campbell Soup to reach our short $49 strike call options, it will again have to push back through the green 50 and red 200 moving averages in the next 60 days. It will take a lot of excitement in Campbell's Soup in order for that to happen. Another reason I felt comfortable doing this is because Campbell's Soup is a pretty stable stock. Notice here in the blue box, as a general rule of thumb, Campbell's Soup will move up or down 63 cents less per dollar move of the overall market. It just doesn't move around a lot. Something really interesting will have to happen in order for Campbell's Soup to move way past our $49 short call option strike price. We like putting the odds of winning in our favor. With all these areas of resistance below the $49 strike call options that we've sold, we believe that the odds are in our favor that we'll be able to pocket most, if not all, of this premium. But just in case we are wrong, which does happen, we bought ourselves a little bit of insurance. You see, this insurance costs us a total of $57.80. That insurance just gives us some protection just in case something really wild and unforeseen happens in Campbell's Soup. If you're selling put options in a stock and the stock moves against your position in a big way, and as a result, the shares are assigned to you and the call options at that strike price aren't paying a very good premium, you might consider selling extra call options above resistance to help generate extra cash flow. When you do that, you might also consider buying yourself a little bit of insurance at a strike price above the call options that you sold just in case the stock moves against you. Will this trade work out for us? Well, we don't know, but we do believe that we have put the odds of winning this trade in our favor, almost doubling the cash we would have received if we had only sold one set of call options, all while selling these call options at a strike price above an area where Campbell's Soup should find resistance. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades similar to the trades I talked through in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patient at the link in the description below. If you'd like more information on how to use covered call options to generate awesome cash flow in return, check out the video series in the link above and the description below entitled Covered Call Option Trading. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.